Welcome to continuing coverage of the NIT from beautiful Los Angeles. A second round NIT game between USC and Western Kentucky. The Trojans won a thrilling double overtime game against UNC Asheville in the first round. And if they win tonight, they'll be home Wednesday to face Oklahoma State. If the Hilltoppers win, they will head to Stillwater for an ESPN2 game on Wednesday. And with Hall wow. of Famer Bill Walton, I'm Dave Pash. How fantastic is this? NIT basketball. Excuse me, you keep going while I fill out my bracket here. I am undefeated to this point. Your bracket in the NIT is much better than your NCAA tournament bracket no, where you had all top 12 teams in the But we got a game here tonight. We're looking for triple overtime because we've got Jordan McLaughlin, a Los Angeles native from the Inland Empire. When this guy plays, he's in complete control. Every day out, this could be his last. And then Darius Thompson. Wow, the fifth-year senior. He was a big-time player over at UVA, Virginia. That's in Charlottesville. But this is a Tennessee native, Murfreesboro, who has come back to Kentucky. Yeah, to continue chasing his dream. The dream for all of these guys to get to New York City, Madison Square Garden, the championship of the NIT. We are on fire. We are underway. I love it. Western Kentucky with 25 wins. They finished third place in Conference USA. They made it to the championship game of the tournament, lost to Marshall. Marshall with Dan D'Antoni, yeah. who sadly went down big time last night in San Diego. Traveling violation, wave it off. And yeah, they lost to West Virginia. Obviously, that's a big rivalry game, Marshall, West Virginia. Really? By the way, uh, I was mentioning, as you look at Rick Stansbury, the head coach, this the guy's fantastic, man. I, had, I spent the day with him and the entire Hilltopper team. The view from the top of the mountain is well worth the effort to get there. Starting in the middle for USC tonight is Victor Uyalumo. Big Vic. He's from Miami, Florida. Well, wait a second. He's from Nigeria. I please. know, but that's where he went to high school. Chemezi Metu where, is. Where did he uh, go to high school? Chemezi Metu is not on the bench. He remember said last week that he's done because he doesn't want to get hurt. And the basket by Uyalumo. The pass from McLaughlin. Throw it down, Big Vic. Throw it down. Great pass. Great ball movement, and you see smile, you see joy, you see guys who want to be here. You can go ahead and talk about the guys who don't want to be here. That's not me. I'm having the time of my life. Well, but I love NIT. Fans want to know where Chemezi met to us. I'm supposed to point out that he's not on the bench anymore. Well, Remember all... last week he sat on the bench, Justin Johnson with the hoop. Some of the fans that I know want to know when the very first basketball game was played. When was it played? 18 by Chemezi Metu here. Well, you're talking about old history. So, so, you have a, so you have a problem with guys. You, you were injured for a good part of a year. Guys that don't want to play in the NIT because they don't want to get hurt. You have a problem with that? Being injured is different from not being, from not wanting to play. Beautiful ball movement here. Jonah Matthews. And Matthews finishes. Be careful with the questions you ask. When you ask complex questions that don't have any relation to the first part of the question, you're putting yourself and then the answerer to the question in a very tenuous position, and I don't like that or appreciate it. You lost me at hello. <laughs> no. And the, oh, I thought it was with wow. <laughs> Colby with the basket. Dwight Colby, he's from the Bahamas. He's actually been to two different colleges prior to coming to Western Kentucky. He started at Ole Miss, then transferred to Kansas. And he, he's a rock. I mean, this guy is a big time player. Big, big, nice play there. Get to the hoop. Look at this guy run up and down. The future of USC basketball. How do you pronounce his last name again? Uyalumo. Uyalumo. Okay. Bearden with the floater is good. Delonte oh, Bearden, who Bearden. played for Bobby Hurley for a year at Buffalo before transferring to Western Kentucky. Yeah, they got Monte Bearden, they got Tay Hollingsworth in the backcourt. It's a very tight rotation here for Rick Stansberry. Yeah, they only play seven guys. This is one of the most legendary programs in the history of all basketball, Western Kentucky. Jordan Usher misses a three, and Western Kentucky ball with a two-point lead. Love this pace here. They will get up and down the floor. They're one of the best shooting teams in the country. They shoot right at 50%. They're not a three-point shooting team. They like to pound it inside. Three-second violation. Mark this date down in it. See, an NIT history. Thank you. The rule book applies. And we'll get into that in a second. So second season for Rick Stansbury. But to what you're talking about there, Bill, before you go on about Stansbury. Well, because, hold on, you said three seconds. You said the rule applies. They have extended the length to the NBA width. And that's why that was a three-second violation. So those white lines are now the, the length. I like that rule. I also love Rick Stansbury. And a lot of other people who I got to spend today, we got to spend time with today here at Big Gables. 
from Wolf Creek, Kentucky. You ever been to Wolf Creek, Kentucky? Yes. Stewart with a three-pointer, the all-time leader in threes for the Trojans. Have you ever stood on Yes. Knees? Okay. Fine. Now we're set. We can move on. One-point Trojan lead. Over the top! Oh! <laughs> Thompson couldn't throw it down. Darius Thompson, you highlighted in the open. Very talented player, high flyer. Had a triple-double in the game this year. Stewart drives, can't finish. Look at Rakosovic. What a game he had in the first round. Had 19 rebounds for USC. 25 points as well. Ball movement. The flow and the pace of this game is excellent. If only, if only Andy Enfield would move to the side so we can watch <laughs> this game, please. He does. This is his area. This is where coaches walk. We just happen to be at the scores no, table. I, I see that line right there. Isn't that their line? Justin Johnson, who is an excellent three-point shooter, 43 percent. First team All-Conference USA. How about on senior night? He proposed to his girlfriend Keely Rogers, right. his high school sweetheart. She accepted <laughs> on senior night. I watched that video. It brought tears to my eyes. Please check that out on ESPN.com. Stewart that misses is a three. That, that, that was one of the greatest moments in the history of my life. That was just so cool. But Andy, I cannot see this game. Well, no one can see now because you just stood up. Well, he's got a chair. Why can't he stay in front of that? He's working. His, so lively, his livelihood is at stake right now. You're so just along mine. for the ride as uh, it's knocked out of bounds by USC. And what a ride it is. <laughs> I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Fifth year for Andy Enfield. Last year they had a school record 26 wins, and they're 24 right now. No fouls called in the game yet. I love NIT. This has been the greatest four-year run in the history of USC basketball. Basket by Colby. And Andy Colby. Enfield at the helm. Tremendous success academically. Now what they need to do is fill the house. That's the next step for this fantastic, legendary, historic, and monumental Trojan program. Second all-time number of Hall of Famers from a single college. There's Shaquan Aaron. Now Rakosovic facing up. Over the course of the year, he has been one of the most improved players in the conference, and we're going to have our first foul. It's going to be on Western Kentucky as Matthews went for the follow and was hacked. Kentucky, my old Kentucky home. Just think about riding in the big yellow Cadillac convertible down the road. Ball movement. Knocking down threes, Justin Johnson. Marrying his sweetheart on senior night and throwing down big, big NIT. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Mobile One Annual Protection. Proven protection for 20,000 miles. Thank you, Traveler, for the ride to the game here tonight. USC has won a combined 127 national championships. The men's team have accounted for 97 of those more than any other school in the entire United States. And that trophy room is just less than 50 yards from where we sit here behind Andy Enfield. And they have a beautiful <laughs> Sports Illustrated wall. They got a bust of... Lou and Helene Galen, the donors that built this magnificent gymnasium. We're having the time of our lives here at USC. And it's a two-point lead for Western Kentucky. We are in the first quarter. That's one of the experimental rules of the NIT. Four quarters rather than two halves. And one thing, uh, one benefit is it resets the foul. So teams aren't in the bonus with 12 minutes to go in the first half. So what other benefits are there to having quarters? Well, I mean, moves a little bit faster. The shot clock resets to 20 seconds instead of 30 after an offensive okay, rebound. but that's not part of a four, of a four quarters instead of half. You can reset that at any time. It should be shorter. Matthews hits a three. Jonah Matthews, the first Trojan on the court here today for practice. Working on extra shooting from the perimeter with the great staff that Andy Enfield has put together. Students back in section, in session. Last year they were all on spring break. Yes, even Max Kent is back. One of the, he's the leading senior manager. He was back in Florida for spring break a year, a week ago with his family. By the way, every level of basketball is quarters except men's college basketball as uh, Hollingsworth misses a three, recosted it with a rebound. So, Alley in to start, what a pass by McLaughlin. That is USC basketball, this is NIT. 
And what I love about the MIT, it's what life is all about. It's about picking yourself up when things don't go your way. It's about reevaluating your goals, recommitting yourself to what you want in life. Forget the life you have, how about the life we want? Yes, yes. beautiful. That's attacking the zone. This guy, Rick Stansberry. Campbell's from College, Kentucky. You ever been there? Yes. Battletown, Kentucky. That's where he's from as Matthews misses. Rebounded by Rikosovic. He's from Wolf Creek. He had 30 people there when he lived there. Now they have 15. Wolf Creek, which flows into the Ohio River. 981 miles long, the Ohio River. Matthews attacking. Stewart, long three ball. It's good. What a start for Stewart. What a start for USC. This is just incredible basketball. Western Kentucky getting outplayed, but hanging in there on the scoreboard. Ain't nothing wrong about the Trojans. And the way that my life's been going, this game is going to be played all the way till Tuesday. Johnson short. And Rakosovic with a rebound. I well, can't remember the last non-overtime I get the privilege to block this. In transition, this is just from one touch of the ball. That's Magic Johnson. That's John Stockton. That's Steve Nash. That's the greatest point guard vision. That's Bob Cousy. Absolutely spectacular. And then the ball movement. Penetration, dish, drive to some other person's defender, and that'll free up your great shooter, Elijah Stewart. Isn't he the greatest three-point shooter in USC history? In terms of made threes, yeah, he's, he's hit the most threes, and he's also played in the most games in USC history. So how else would you rate the greatest three-point shooter other than most things? Well, some of it's percentage. You can look at percentage, too. Basket by four. I forgot. Some guys make one for two. I wouldn't really call that the greatest three-point shooter in USC history. Minute and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Attack that zone. Flash somebody to the high post. Cut along the baseline. Overload one side. Get a post-up player. They do with Colby. And Colby goes to the left and what a tip. Man, we are watching Hollingsworth. Hey, He's uh, 6'2 uh, in warm-ups. He was dunking with ease. He's the first freshman team captain in school history. And he broke Courtney Lee's freshman scoring record. Courtney Lee's still playing in the NBA. He's had a nice career. But those are all very nice players, but please. Well, Jim McDaniel's player. We're not allowed to play. Jim is the greatest player in Oakley school. The school history of Western Kentucky. His son is here tonight. His son and his wife are here tonight. Eskias and his wife Crystal, they now live in Los Angeles. Jim sadly passed away this past fall. And I didn't know it in the last broadcast. I'm so embarrassed. We'll get back to that later. Led uh, Western Kentucky to the Final Four back in 1971 before little Billy stepped on campus and Westwood. Uh, what a final four that was. Kansas, Jacksonville. Were you a senior in high school? No. In 71, I was a freshman. You were a freshman to UCLA, unable to play. Unable to play. And the timer at seven. Great and defense. Look at Elijah Stewart. Thompson underneath. The stop by Justin Johnson. Throw it down. We got three seniors on this team. And Justin, he's been there for four years. Remember, this is Rick Stanford, only his second year. Right. And so he was down there at Texas A&M. As an assistant, he was a head coach at Mississippi State. We did a game against Texas A&M this year. That was a fantastic performance of basketball. How about, speaking of A&M, clobbering North Carolina, making it I to the Sweet 16. I was happy for Billy Kennedy. But do you recall, and I'm not sure if you do, when we did that A&M game, how much talent you they had on the floor against what? Arizona. You were there. Shot clock is on. SC by three with possession. It's the fastest moving game I've ever been a part of. Jordan McLaughlin already with five assists for the Trojans. Stewart with ten points to lead USC in scoring. So while they're just wasting time out there, were you there at that game with A&M? Here's McLaughlin. Send it back. Oh, What's it right there. Shot by Jordan McLaughlin. The game was in Phoenix, not at A&M. Half court tried. The buzzer by Johnson, no good. And the Trojans lead by five after one. Yeah, but A&M went there. Right, but it was in Phoenix. Yeah, with DeAndre Ayton. Right. In Arizona. Very good. Wow. How about the there. Trojans' offense here in the first quarter? I am here tonight watching this brilliant display. That's Paul Westfall right there. The ability to get down the lane, draw the defender, lean back, throw it up, tease him. MIT basketball from Los Angeles, but this is southeastern Kentucky, the Daniel Boone National Force. Huge in space. This is where Daniel Boone came through the Cumberland Gap and showed the way for the settlers. Oh my gosh, what a game here tonight. But Daniel Boone National Force, one of, 
154 national forests in our country. There are 20 additional grasslands in the United States, which contribute $14.5 billion annually to the U.S. economy. You look at uh, Western Kentucky, founded in Bowling Green, enrollment of 20,000. The slogan, the spirit makes the master. In your case, it would be an evil spirit. Stewart wow. kicks it out to uh, Aaron in the paint. They're going to call a foul here. We only had 15 minutes of real time in that first quarter, though. There were 33 possessions, 33 shot attempts, only three fouls called, and again, 15 minutes real time. Nobody dislikes that more than little Timmy Sullivan, who just can't believe that this game won't last until Tuesday, March 20th. It, it is almost Tuesday on the East Coast. Also, happy birthday to Pat Riley from Kentucky College. Schenectady from birth. Pat Riley will be 73 tomorrow. Happy birthday, Pat. I hope you got the convertible back from the Kentucky Derby back when you were a Kentucky Wildcat in the 60s. Miami Heat, by the way, beat the Denver in double overtime tonight. Rikosovic with the basket, and the Trojan lead is now set. So that's two straight victories on the road at the Western Conference here for Miami, beating the Lakers Friday night at Staples, just a mile from here. Tough shot off the window goes for Josh, Josh Anderson, a freshman from Baton Rouge. Now, how talented is this guy? This is the, really the highest rated player of Josh Anderson in a long time coming to Western Kentucky. And they also have a four-star guard. It's, uh, it's amazing that Dale Brown let this guy, Josh Anderson, out of Baton Rouge. A Delano Banton, who's from Toronto. He's going to be coming to Western Kentucky next year. They also have a transfer from Austin P. Jared Savage, who's going to be a starter next year. Wednesday night NBA doubleheader. How about LeBron? A 40-point triple-double tonight. Congratulations, LeBron. Phenomenal. They play Toronto, and then it'll be the Wizards and Spurs. The Warriors are playing the Spurs right now. Did you see the story on ESPN.com about LeBron working on his back to make sure he got to play all 82 games? He wanted to work on his health overall. Just fantastic how hard he works. Wow. I love the I love NIT. Elijah Stewart tips it in. That's 12 points now for Stewart. 12 to the 27 for the Trojans. Great defense here. Colby, maybe not the right guy to flash up there. A couple of left-handed finishers here for an all-right-handed team, the Hilltoppers. Well, you ever been to the top of the mountain? Yes. And Western Kentucky, you know, they, during the regular season, won 14 games in the Conference USA. That was a good league this year. You had Middle Tennessee, which was a bubble team for the NCAA tournament. Marshall got the automatic bid. Right. It was a deep league. And a foul here on Western Kentucky. It'll how many, the teams, in the, how many teams in the Conference USA? I'd have to look at it. Okay, 14. Thank you. Holland and it truly go. is Conference USA. We can you imagine a conference that goes from Norfolk, Virginia, <laughs> to El Paso, Texas? That's three different time zones, please. Counting daylight savings. You ever been to El Paso? I have. So, you know in the harmonic convergence? Yes. It was on this date, March 19th, 1966, the Glory Road story. El Paso, beautiful pass, Jordan Usher, throw it down. So that's 14 fouls, and they get to Anderson for the first Okay, so just take a moment here, just to, to detail this harmonic convergence today. Glory Road? Yep. Glory Road, this is the, this is the date. Yep. 56 years ago, and 17 days, Wilt scored his 100-point game. And at the same time that was happening, Chick Hearn took over the broadcasting for the Lakers. And then, on this date, 56 years ago, March 19th, Bob Dylan released his first album ever. Self-titled Bob Dylan. And then it just goes on and on with Pat Riley celebrating his 73rd birthday with the nine championship rings in every capacity in the NBA. This is one of the greatest moments of my life. What was your name again? Roxy. Jake Ulmer into the game. Jake Ulmer is your name? He's, no, he's the guy right in front of us who's oh. got the basketball. Look at your roster. They have a couple of broken noses on this team. But only Jake is only Jake is wearing the mask. Lamonte Beard, what a great name. Lamonte Beard. He, prefer, he prefers to go by Monte. Like Monte Nelson. Nelson with the J. How many times do you break your nose, by the way? 14. 14? Yeah. Try 
to get one more so that it, <laughs> so that it would be a little bit straighter. Yeah, I'm more than happy to uh, oblige. Beautiful. Attack the basket if you're the Trojans. The pace of this game is superb for entertainment fans. Rotation defensively for the Hilltoppers is just a bit too slow. Well, and the Trojans now playing like we thought they would play all season long. It's a preseason top ten. Andy Enfield was preseason coach of the year. And it, it, it has not played out. But they got a chance. They're two games away from being in New York City at Madison Square Garden. What more could you ask for? Let it fly, Jake. And Omar drills a three-pointer. But going back to what you said about USC. You know, you know, they had a good year. They finished second in the Pac-12. Runner-up to Arizona for the Pac-12. In the Pac-12 tournament, they just felt that they would have beaten one other team in December, Oklahoma or AM. They would have been in the big dance. But here they are in the NIT, and they have a lead at home, but it's down to three. A lot of difference between potential and reality. Catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN Family of Networks. For more, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. And so far in this game, we've had great action tonight. Yes, Pac-12 on full display. But with so many things happening on the court, Elijah Stewart now finally getting a chance to take a breath. A senior like George McLaughlin. They'll have a new backcourt next year here for the Trojans. You see uh, 25 field goals, 13 assists, and four, 13 different players have had field goals in 14 minutes of game action. It's what you hope for in basketball. Ball movement, everybody working together in sync, trying to create a new harmonic convergence. The referees letting them go in supreme talent, athleticism, and mostly skill. Let it fly, George. Oh, the big dick going over there. And he was fouled. That's a 15 foul, so they're in the penalty. Still no fouls on USC. It's on holding his first, and so Victor Lumo will be at the line. He played five minutes in round one. Again, he's in because Chemezi Metu has elected not to play. He's just because he's the future, and that's what they're looking for here. They're not looking backwards. All right, but again, Metu not playing because he doesn't want to get hurt before the NBA. He's going to the NBA. You've already said that. I'd I know, rather talk about Daniel Boone and Big yeah, I know that, but again, there are people that are tuning in you know, minutes, a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. we got to reset the story. Don't, There's but, another guy not playing, but he's hurt. Benny Boatwright, he's not available because of an injury. Got to spend a great day of practice here today. What a week for me, though. To Jim Hill, Jim Hill the legend. Eight NFL years, Chargers, Cleveland, Green Bay, 32 years as the voice of sports here in Los Angeles. And he's 40 years old. He looks 40. Oh, he looks 28. You were hanging out with him today. He was here all day at practice. Oh, where were you? Colby, yes, Kansas. Oh, Bill Self, let it fly. Right. Colby! He's originally from the Bahamas, a grad transfer from Kansas. He started his college career at Ole Miss. You ever been on the Bourbon Trail yes, in Kentucky? Yes, I have. Yes. Nice. But the Red River Gorge. Did you ever have dinner with Jim and Pat Post? Jim Host is basically the guy. There's the bourbon trail right there. Okay, so Cincinnati's up at the top. Indianapolis off to the northwest. Knoxville down to the southeast. And then Nashville, and just below that Nashville sign, that's where Bowling Green is. Bowling Green, the third largest city in the great state of Kentucky. Western Kentucky, the third largest public university in the great state of are you Kentucky. A, are you allowed in Kentucky, given all the truck stops that are there? Are you allowed to go there? Why don't we go do a game in Kentucky next year? I've never... Let's go and do a I, game in Kentucky I, I, next I've been year. To Kentucky. On, I've been to Kentucky. The best news for me out of Kentucky right now, all the coal strip mines. So the strip mine area in Kentucky for the coal. If you put solar panels all over those areas, you would have enough energy to provide 10% of our entire country's need for an entire year. If you covered just 20% of the strip mine area, you'd have enough energy to power all of Kentucky for an entire year. Please, the future. Back to the game, USC by three years. Usher for three. And Jordan Usher, freshman from Kansas, Georgia. Another guy that's gotten better as the season has gone along. He had 13 points in their first round win over USC.
UNC Asheville. A future star in the Pac-12 here. Uh, Jordan Usher has worked tirelessly. Curtis Schultz, their strength and conditioning coach, is superb here at USC. He's got the profession. What he's done, what he will do for Big Ben, what he has already done for in just four months here with Jordan Usher. That is an absolute stud and a tireless worker here. Push the ball. Come on, Hilltoppers. Get to the top of the mountain. Yeah, Jake Olmo with two threes. Here he is again. That's a deep one. And this one off target. Rebounded by Jonah Matthews. I love Preston. Hey, get a hand up! Here's Justin Osher. Jordan Usher just power his way to the hoop. And Western Kentucky ball. We get a three-point game. Still no fouls by USC here in the quarter. Well, Western Kentucky's already over the limit. As Beard gets deep in the lane and puts it in. One of the skills that Big Ben is going to have to learn, and he should study film of the Kimolaj one. That's his path to glory road there. Is he's going to have to learn to block the shot at an angle coming toward the shooter's hand, not at the top of the sh of the arc. Bill, how much of that is instinct? How much of that is practice? Everything yeah. is taught. What's your name again? Keep going. I mean, who, who taught you? Marty Glickman? Uh, he, Marv, Marty, Costas. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So somebody taught you, right? Marty Glickman taught me how to speak, and his coach wouldn't say he was super mad at Marty because Marty never taught me how to stop speaking. And so that ability of guys to learn. What's your path forward in life? Have a dream, have a vision, and then choose a teacher. A teacher, the best way to get to where you want to go is to talk to somebody who's on their way back. But that's a that's a key of a lot so, of so uh, again, if I'm Big Vic, right? Study a key of a lot of Okay, thank you. So you're key of a and Kevin McHale. That's who we've got to study. Loose ball. Bearden picks it up. Nick Rakosovic, what a star! And that was going to be a shot clock violation, but it's USC ball and now. A silly foul there that's going to put McLaughlin at the line because again they're over the limit, so it'll be two free throws. It's on Josh Anderson, a second person. You know how we talked about the Bob Dylan album, the 56 year anniversary today. We did. Bob's got 38 albums. You know who's got the most? Do I want to know? Of albums of all time. Big Crosby, 106 albums. And you have all of them including the bootlegs, don't you? I do. Did you ever listen to White Christmas by Bing? Absolutely, of course. McLaughlin misses the free throw. How about that? He's yeah, a junior or Did you ever know Hershey Feldman, a current artist, producer, who does these, who takes these historical figures like Tchaikovsky and Beethoven? And K. Felder, he played at Oakland. No, no, no. Hershey Felder and Irving Berlin. And they are the greatest things ever. They will completely change your life. Please. Irving Berlin's White Christmas. He wrote it for Ben Crosby. Wow. What a story. What a harmonic conversion. A more in IT. I'm also sticking with Wolf Moon these days. Neil Young's recent. Now let's not album. go there. Uh, oh. Let's stop while we're behind. Here's Beard in the lane. Shot clock at once. We have another shot clock violation. They did not get it off. Would not have counted from all. Point lead for USC, 252 to go. What a game, what a life. I love the NIT. Wolf Moon, thank you for rising. Keep on shining while you endure the thoughtless plundering. Coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship. Regional semifinals begins Thursday on CBS and TBS at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. For more, go to NCAA.com. An aerial view of USC's campus, 226 acres, but they recently added 15 more for the USC Village so guys like Elijah Stewart can have their dreams come true. And when he's able to step out and knock down these three pointers, there is no stop at this point. And at some point, these guys, Elijah, Jordan McMahon, Along with Paul Westfall, Bill Sharman, and Rudy, uh, John Rudabekin, and then also Bob Boyd. Who else is up there? If USC wins tonight, they'll play Oklahoma State here Wednesday, so it would be one more opportunity for Elijah Stewart and Jordan McLaughlin to play on their home floor, two seniors. And to get to New York City. Yeah. That's dream enough.
By the way, McLaughlin has six assists, no turnovers. Elijah Stewart has 12 points to lead all scores. And the Trojans, though, just a one-point lead over Western Kentucky. Two and a half to go. We're close if it couldn't handle the pass. Hilltoppers with a chance to take the lead. Conference USA on full display. And the basket. Finish here. Thompson, there is Thompson. Gives Western Kentucky the lead. Okay, now they're changing defense. Rick Stansberry. Wolf Creek, Wolf Moon. Are the wolves born with blue eyes? They, those eyes turn yellow. Thornton misses, rebounded by Bearden, and again Western Kentucky pushing tempo. Ulmer is fouled, wow. and he took a shot to the face, playing with that mask. He's got a broken nose, please. Now, let's go. The number two, uh, Matthews, you don't want to. I'm not willing five. to accept risk. Uh, you know, I, I get so tired of sitting here and, and listening to you whining and complaining about how hard this is. I'm always reminded of Abe Levins. Who, when asked about the pressure on these young guys trying to balance athletics and academics, right? So Abe Lemons, one of the absolute legends ever, he would say when he heard about that pressure in his full controversy, he, he said, Abe, when I was 18 and on my belly in Iwo Jima, I thought to myself, oh man, Abe, you sure are lucky not to be facing the dual pressures of academics and athletics. Thank you, Abe Lemons, for your life, which has given us ours. Never spent any time with Abe. Jay Gomer to the bench. McLaughlin running the offense here. That Great hands defensively. I tell you, this squad is so well-skilled and schooled. The Hilltoppers. Thornton kicks it out. McLaughlin will try a three and buries at the time. The game is 38. So one thing I learned this week about Bowling Green, is that they have another bowling green in Ohio. Yeah. That's where you didn't know that? No, that's where I thought they were the same place. That's you, where Nate Thurman went. You know, that's 40, where Scott Hamilton went. There are 48 other states besides Oregon and California, in case you're wondering. Mm. <laughs> Turnover by Western My Kentucky. Kentucky Thornton. Home. Offensive foul, yep. please. Charge on Thornton. That is his oh, first. You know how the guys have the broken noses in this game, right? Wolves have more than 200 million scent cells in their nose. Humans only have 5 million. The wolves can smell animals more than a mile away. Did you know Oklahoma State plays the winner of this game? It'll be a Wednesday night. I got that on my bracket. ESPN 2. So Southern Cal wins the games here. If Western Kentucky wins, the game's in Stillwater. Oh, Los Angeles or Stillwater? One minute remaining in the second quarter. A series of dreams. It's out a minute to go here in the half. We're tied 38. Look at that. That is beautiful yes. basketball. And these guys Johnson. are playing like Nashville did last week, like Princeton played here on December 19th. One of the great games I've ever seen. And that Asheville game was spectacular, too. Double overtime. I'm hoping for triple tonight. Let's do it. Stewart misses. And Rakosovic with the hand, so they get a fresh shot. But remember, it goes to 20 now Good. on an offensive rebound, an experimental rule. And, and the reason why that's important here is because they would have been able to milk the clock and basically take the last shot. But because the clock reset to 20 now. Okay, so that's all I ever think about is milking the clock. Really? Come on, this is basketball. And while we're talking about Kentucky, let's thank Adolph Rupp for speeding up the game of basketball. Back in the old days of, you're talking about Stillwater, talking about the old days of Hank Iba and slow it down and win 29-28, right? Adolph Rupp comes in and says, hey, let's pick that up here. What Kaywood Ledford did for all of basketball throughout the United States, the great broadcaster for those years. Aaron Tom, misses the second free throw. Tom Hammond did. What, all, all these legendary people in the state of Kentucky. Hey, Tom Hammond, what he did to put up with you for all those years when you guys were working together on NBC. I ruined his life, too. Thank you, Tom, for your life. Ah, Mammoth Cave National Park, the largest cave system in the world. More than 360 miles of connected tunnels here. It's the second oldest tourist attraction in all of the United States after Niagara Falls. Please check out Ken Burns, the National Parks of America, one of the greatest media contributions ever. Shot won't fall for Thompson. SC with five seconds to go. Here's Aaron with two. Gets stripped. Got time. Oh! 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 Oh!
think he got it away in time. NIT. It did go in. That's why we love NIT. It did go in. Relax. 40 39. Oh. Western Kentucky leads at halftime over the number one seed. It didn't go in. The Trojans were led by Elijah Stewart's 12 points. I'm heading, for, I'm heading for the Bourbon Trail. It's Tuesday somewhere. Well, on the East Coast, it's Tuesday. 40-39, Western Kentucky back after these messages. Welcome into our halftime report. Matt Chick along with Dallin Cuff. Remember the movie Men in Black? <laughs> yes, I do. I wonder where you're going, but yeah, I remember well, that. Uh, bear with me here. Remember they had that light that they would hold up and say, look at this light, oh, yeah. and it would flash, and you would forget Neuralizer, everything. Neuralizer, I believe they called that. Okay, sad that I know that. I think man. that might be right. It's okay. It's your, it's your favorite movie of all time, and that's, that's more than appropriate. <laughs> the Pac-12 would certainly love to have that actually be an actual thing yeah. and forget this season, especially the postseason. Three teams made the NCAA tournament. Two made the first four, all of them out after the first game. They didn't get to the second weekend. Since the Big 12 was created more than 20 years ago, no team among the six major conferences failed to send a team to the second round of the tournament until this year. You saw on the graphic, Ben, since the mid-'80s, since the Pac-12 failed to win a game. So was this just one bad season, or is it a harbinger of things to come? It's a, it's a tough spot they're in right now. This is a season we knew this was gonna, this could play out this way. But from watching all year, this team was me this conference was mediocre at best. I mean, Arizona on the top end, they had some weird losses. Arizona State was the story of the non-conference, but struggled to a bad finish below 500 in a conference. Like I said, that was average. You look at USC, they're con they're they're tangled up in the FBI situation. So is Arizona. There are some issues that are going to plague this conference going forward as well. So next year we'll see how they bounce back. But this year, no surprise how they performed in postseason. And no matter what conference you're in, you want your your bell cows, your blue blood, your traditional powers to rise to the top and be good that's how conferences typically are judged so you look at the Pac-12 Arizona UCLA mm -hmm. which of those teams do you think has the better chance to bounce back next season oh, UCLA by no far doubt. and away it's not even close Arizona is going to be I don't want to use the term in shambles but close to it you lose your big guns you lose DeAndre Ayton you're going to lose Alonzo Trier you're going to lose Par Parker Jackson Cartwright to graduation Dusan Rissage to graduation potentially Raleigh Alkins goes pro you don't know what's going on with Sean Miller. you got the FBI investigation, which has caused you to lose all your top recruits. Those guys have all gone elsewhere. So Arizona, the cupboard is bare, and nothing's coming in. Uh, this is going to be there in real trouble, the Wildcats. Interesting to see where this goes. UCLA, you know, opposite end of the spectrum. Farron Holiday comes back. You've got great players coming in, a top three recruiting class by ESPN's rankings right now. So Steve Alford's got a good situation as long as they don't try to run him out of town. They got a good situation there in terms of the talent coming in, who's coming back. Yeah, you're Arizona. How do you recruit to that? How, how well, do you obviously you, that, you, you can't because they all left. Yeah, it's yeah they're, they're leaving. Uh, let's try to spin it positive here with the Pac-12. Now, in the first round of the National Invitation Tournament, Pac-12 teams went 5-0 yep. in that round. How beneficial is that? Is NIT success for a conference? That's important just in terms of who's doing it. And they, they, what's good, it's not, it's not their teams. It's not like Arizona State didn't make the NCAA and is going to the NIT. Their young teams are performing right now. Let's start with Oregon. This is a team that, you know, made it to the Final Four last year. They lose a lot. This year they try to reload. They still have Peyton Pritchard. They get other really good recruiting class in there. They had some solid wins at times this year, but inconsistency plagues a young team. There's nothing wrong with that. But they can really emerge here. Washington and Mike Hopkins' first year came out of nowhere. Again, a young team where he's building his system in there. They play the 2-3 zone coming from, or, uh, coming from Syracuse. So, you know, Washington could make a big step here. They need to perform well in this NIT to learn, get that experience, and it can vault, vault them into next year. Big win at Kansas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was Ball amazing. Allen Fieldhouse. That was remarkable this year. You mentioned Oregon. You mentioned Washington. Give me another team in the Pac-12 trending up. I think the biggest one is Stanford. I think Stanford, as long as Reed Travis comes back, they're 6-8, they're you know, versatile four-man. That team can really can make a big jump. They have Dejon Davis, other young players behind him. Jared Haas will be coming into his third year as the coach. And I think this Stanford team is poised to make the biggest jump in the league as long as I said, as Travis comes back. They had some good wins this year. They were, you know, getting into potential NCAA tournament conversation mid-February. But again, a young team. They had inconsistencies. They had some failures. But they're a team that I think can really are poised to make a jump. That's why, again, the NIT. It's, it has been a rough year for the Pac-12. Again, didn't get a team into the college football playoff. Oh, yeah. Didn't get a team to the second round of the NCAA. Well, Larry Scott's probably. loving you rehashing this stuff. Yeah, right probably, we probably should move on. They're trying to make memories that they do want to remember with no white light held up. Neuralizer. That's very good.
or a NIT extra. Forty to thirty-nine, Western Kentucky leads USC at halftime, and for one final time, the best of, or depending on your perspective, the worst of, Walton's world. Oh my God! How awesome is that? The team that scores the most points wins. I'm told not related to Justin Bieber. How's Baxter doing? Uh, he died three years ago. Oh. Can't tell you how many times I've seen this guy at the front <laughs> row at the Beach Boys concert. The Duck and I are close. We trained together. I saw that. He was helping you do bench pressing today, right? right. Puddles. Your name is Puddles? Do I have one of these? Does mine come apart like this? Do you eat mushrooms? I love mushrooms. They look better. And on that note, we close another door on Walton's World 2018 until November. Oh, wait, we, we have one half left. Western Kentucky leads USC back in a moment. Welcome back to the second round of the NIT. I love NIT. One of the great things about Los Angeles, California, Gleaming in the golden light of day as the sun just sets over Santa Monica Bay. Think back to 1968, Abe Lemons, Oklahoma City, and the NIT versus Duke. How cool. At halftime, Abe Lemons, he says to a team, you're playing so terrible, just go back out and scrimmage against yourself and try to find your game. Howard Cosell, who was at the game, he starts questioning Abe Lemons's mindset and his plan and his process to go forward and Abe Lemons looked back at Howard and he said hey you may be a big shot here in New York City but you're nothing in Oklahoma get out of my face and that's what happened in 1968 NIT and what's happening right now here at the Galen Center fantastic basketball we got a one-point lead for Western Kentucky one more could we ask for on our way to triple overtime what was your name again? Oh, good. They finally if found you, some water for you. you call me Cole, and you're the one that keeps talking about things that happened in the 60s. Please. Yeah, the numbers for this game in 2018, Western Kentucky 61% shooting. They shot 69% in the second quarter. And they have a one-point advantage on the Trojans, the winner to play Oklahoma State. If USC wins, the game will be here in Los Angeles on Wednesday. If Western Kentucky wins, they'll go on the road to Oklahoma State Wednesday. Block shot to start the third quarter on Justin Johnson. Great offensive execution for the Hilltoppers in the first half. 60% shooting, but Jordan Usher right off the first transition the opportunity making it fly here. Yeah, we got a lot of fans here tonight at Galen. We're having a grand time. That was Jordan Usher's second three-pointer of the game. Both his baskets have been threes. Mark this down. Jordan Usher will be an all-Pac-12 performer before his career is out. The same way for Victor Bailey up at Oregon. Sad to see Oregon go out early. Yeah, they lost to Marquette yesterday. Since when are you into making predictions? Normally you stay away from any sort of uh, predicting. Not a prediction when it comes to basketball. Stewart lost the handle. You know what another observation is? Oh, incredible play. McLaughlin couldn't finish. He had seven assists, seven points in the first half. Western Kentucky, 23 NCAA tournament appearances, seven Sweet 16, one Final Four. Thank you, Jim McDaniel. 42 conference champions. That's third all-time behind Kentucky and Kansas. 44 20-win season, seventh all-time. Johnson fouled on the jumper by Usher, his second foul. It's the ninth all-time greatest program in the history of basketball. Top 20 all-time wins. This is a program, Western Kentucky. I love the view from the top of the mountain. Utah uh, moved on, beat okay. LSU, so there are still uh, some Pac-12 teams left in the NIT. Washington's playing at St. Mary's, that game on ESPNU. Happy to see that Larry Kostowiak is in the top 10 of coaches in college basketball. Way to go, Larry. Well-deserved. Thank you, Chris Hill, for Larry Kostowiak. 
Freshman, he saw the shot there. Rich Stansbury in his second year. He was the head coach of Mississippi State from 1998 to, 19, uh, to 2012. Led them to six NCAA tournaments. And he had you speak to the team today. What'd you tell them? Have fun. Learn life's greatest lessons. This is a fantastic opportunity for you. And shoot every time you touch the ball. Chase, you sure, you, sure you appreciated that. Although they kind of do that anyway. I mean, they, they get up and down the floor. But, but so this family, oh, Rich Stansbury's oh, family, he coached at Mississippi State. He brought his team out here in the early 2000s. And he was with John Wooden at the Wooden Class. Where his team raised UCLA by 20. And at the auction for the event, and then today I got a picture with Mio, his wife. It's Mio, not Mio. Mio, his wife. Quit talking about Baxter, please. And then they got the three children, Isaac, Noah, and Luke. What a family. The two years that they took off and they traveled America in an RV, went to all the national parks, Grand Tetons, Yellowstone, Glacier. USC back in front by two. McLaughlin having a terrific night. Got a steal on one end. But, yeah, but what, Rick on the what Rick Stansbury said about those two years when he said it was the greatest two years of his life. And he, that's what he recommends to every coach who's, who's a lifer, which he is. at Austin P. It was in there. Here's Bearden driving. Throws it up and it drops through. Plus a foul. A three-point opportunity for Levante Bearden, who's from Milwaukee. He went to Buffalo. Played for one year for Bobby Hurley. Transferred. Yeah, Bobby Hurley was one of the great players in the history of college basketball, doing a remarkable job at Arizona State. But Austin P. I mean, come on, Fly Williams. Did you ever meet Fly Williams? Did you ever play against Fly Williams? I played, yes. Okay. So Fly preceded Rick Stansberry at Austin P. But they had the great slogan there for Fly. The Fly is open. Let's go, P. <laughs> Laughlin in transition. Who can stop this Trojan attack? Jordan Usher, throw it down. Dr. J to the who. Now that I've collected myself a three-point opportunity for Jordan Usher with the Trojans retaking the lead. Usher, a freshman from Georgia who has been one of the most improved players on this Trojan team since but, the beginning of the year. But the power, the strength, the determination, and the willing to put his willingness to put his body on the line. Like Jonah Matthews, just a, a tireless worker on his game, and, and the posture. You know, you, when we talk about LeBron James back and his physical fitness, that doesn't just happen. You, know, you don't get a body like yours just by sitting on the couch and looking for the bourbon trail. Third foul on Dwight Colby. And the first foul on Western Kentucky here in the quarter. Three minutes into the third. A floater short by Johnson. Big Out of Vic. bounds, it's going to stay with Western Kentucky. Vic couldn't get the rebound. But Big Vic's ability and willingness to attack that offensive glass. When you're a big man, that's what you want to use your fouls for. You get five, there's no sense in saving them. There's no sense in having one foul. You, 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 you want to start the fourth quarter with at least three fouls. Yeah, but they want him on the floor. They don't have any other bigs really to go to other than him and Rakosevic, and they play together, so. They're doing fine. They've got enough. They've got enough to win the NIT. I love NIT. Two-point USC lead. Trojans in a zone. Okay, the way that Justin Johnson has played that high post. No wonder Keeley said yes to the marriage proposal. Collinsworth collides with McLaughlin, commits a second foul, third team foul. Yeah, that was on senior night, in case you didn't hear that story. Uh, Justin Johnson, he's from Hazard, Kentucky. You ever been there? Yes. And he proposed to his girlfriend, Keeley Rogers, his high school sweetheart, on senior night. It was so cool. They had it before the game in a packed house. They play in the Diddle Arena. Diddle was the coach there for 42 years. He, when he retired in 1962, he was the winningest coach in the history of college basketball. Bowling Green, beautiful pass, throw it down. Big and Vic, well, just, we're gonna be saying that a lot, throwing it down, Big Vic. Justin Johnson's dad, a retired coal miner in Kentucky, and uh, at the line will be Uyalumo. You know whose dads were also in the coal industry? 
John Havlicek and Kevin McHale, both of them who died from black lung. Oh, you know what's really cool? Uh, this conference USA team, they had their tournament for the first time ever at the Dallas Cowboys practice complex, right? And the place is so big that they were able to play the men's and the women's simultaneously in the same building. They put a big soundproof curtain between the two. You could sit at the 50-yard line and watch both games at the same time. Absolutely brilliant. Have you been to Jerry World? Uh, yes, I have. I'm 65. <laughs> I've been out there since I was 15. Thompson in the lane gets it to go. Darius Thompson, grad transfer from Virginia. Boy, how about what happened to the Cavaliers? Western, Western Kentucky is killing this zone. What, what? And the infield should just go man to man and say, we're going to guard you. You guard him, you guard him. Stop somebody, get a rebound, and let's go on offense. That, that zone worked pretty well for Syracuse against Michigan State. Yeah, but that's not here. Please. But the, the Trojans have played some zone this year, and it's worked. Yeah, but it's not working tonight. And so, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Oh, please. What's interesting. Did you notice a Stephen Hawking passed away? Bearden for three. No good. Beautiful. And big, big. Look up the court, Victor. Is it back to the baseline? He can't hear you. Matthews with a pull-up jumper, no good. Batted out by Big Vic. And a fresh 20 seconds after the clock resets to it in uh, the NIT, an offensive Look rebound. That. Big Vic leaning in, draws the foul. That's the third on Anderson. You can see the confidence building for Uyalumo. That's what a coach is supposed to do. Breathe on life. Colby. Andy Enfield, Rick Stansberry. We've got it all. NIT, Martin Bahar, Princeton, Vanderbilt. Dr. Philip Collis, yes, we have got a game, NIT, yes. Bluegrass country, yeah, Kentucky, one of the most prosperous places in the entire universe. Limestone, calcium in the water, strong bones, and great basketball players in Kentucky. None as great as Jim McDaniels. This is from the Final Four in 1971. He leads his Hilltoppers. Wow. He became the all-time leading scorer and rebounder in the history of this legendary program. He just died this past fall due to complications from diabetes. He played in the NBA. He played in the ABA. He was an absolute legend. His son, Eskias, is here tonight. His son, Eskias, his wife, Crystal, who's pregnant with the next generation of McDaniels. How fantastic. Crystal and Eskias, they live here in Los Angeles. They came down here again. He was wearing his dad's Final Four yeah. ring. He's wearing his dad's Letterman jacket. Yes, this is the harmonic convergence coming full circle. Thank you to Daniels family. Yes, not related to Jack Daniels, but this is an incredible group of people who has built this community in Bowling Green. Kentucky, not Ohio. Not Ohio. Ohio. Yep, that's yes. the other bowling game. With hey, anyway, 48-47. Anyway. Might go in there. SC leads by one. Four and a half to go here in the third quarter. Winner to play Oklahoma State Wednesday in the quarterfinals with okay, so a spot at the Garden at Stick. Madison Square Garden. There's lots of gardens. What a move by Beard. Speaking of gardens, have you read Salmon Rusty's yes, the Golden House? I have. Oh man. That's like being on tour with the Grateful Dead, Bob Dylan, and the Alone at the same time. Whoa, what a ride. Thornton drives and kicks, and it's intercepted by Anticipation. Beard. That's Michael Jordan. That's James Worthy. That's North Carolina. Wow, look at Bearden extending again. He's got long arms. He got to the rim. Couldn't finish that. This is an excellent looking team. They would just stick to their game plan, not keep changing it up. Great defense two times in a row. Bill Toppers. You know, the university is built on top of a hill. That's one of the Thank reasons you. why they call it the Hill Toppers. Thank you for that. Basket Gosh. by Anderson. Anderson. Nice reverse by the freshman. It's interesting that the only holdover really was Justin Johnson. All these guys are new. They're either grad transfers or freshmen. So to get 25 wins, maybe 26, with basically an entirely new team. But this is a remarkable, remarkable coach. Please, it would be remarkable to Andy Eichel yeah. and then watch this game. Oh, Rick with the basket. Bill, sit down. The people behind you can't see now. Tap Andy on the shoulder. 
dare you. You'll be thrown out. Don't do it. Just kidding. <laughs> you sound like my wife. Don't do it. Don't do it. One, one point lead inside. Three minutes to go here in the third. Great defense, Elijah Stewart. Just shut him down out there. Anderson, fall away, well defended. Rakosovic rebounds. He played it perfectly. Make him do what he doesn't want to do. Make him turn his back, change direction, and take a shot that he hasn't made maybe in his entire life. i got to stand back up. All right, we have not touched on this, so I need to get your thoughts, Bill, on the, the NCAA tournament and what happened with the Pac-12. Were you surprised, shocked? How would you describe nobody from the conference getting to the round of 32? Disappointed. That Embarrassed. I want the Pac-12 to do fantastic. I want all these arenas to be great and filled every night. And it's just... You gotta play good ball, you gotta come to work. You, gotta come, you, you have to come with the attitude of, this is the last day of my life. Think of Stephen Hawking. And think of what he did with his life against all the odds, against all the challenges. And he would always say, as Huey Long said, we're talking about the guy from Baton Rouge, right? What did Huey Long say on his death Please, God, don't let me die. There's so much more to do. When I look down underneath this basket, I see NIT. That is fantastic. Coverage of the uh, Division I Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 starts Thursday on CBS and TBS, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. So we talked about the disappointment of the Pac-12, but the most disappointing performance of all was Virginia, losing to UMBC, a 16 seed and getting blown out. It's never happens. I completely disagree. In the NCAA tournament. You haven't listened to a thing I've said all year long. What else did you do? What does that have to do with UMBC, a 16 seed, beating a one for the first time? I had him in my bracket. You did not. <laughs> Stop. You, please. You did not. UMBC thing. Anderson gives Western Kentucky its largest lead. Time out, USC. Five-point lead for the Hilltoppers. I told you all year long, any one of 30 teams, 3-0 teams, could win the NCAA tournament. And UMBC was one. No, I had them in the top five. No, I was I love retrievers. I love dogs. I love climbing to the top of the mountain. I love Trojans. All right, so what does USC need to do here to get back? They're never tried right now, and they've struggled. They're turning the ball over carelessly. Turnovers are okay as long as they're a omission, not a omission. When you jump in the air, you got to be jumping to shoot. you got to be able to create offense right now. The flow has been very inconsistent. You know, talk to Fly Williams and Austin P about consistent flow here, but that ability of the Trojans to come and just keep the attack going all year long we've talked about sustainability the sun is shining we talk about the wolves making the big comeback the wolves were the first animal on the endangered species list what a and play by their turnover hollingsworth with a great steal then he got fouled the fight of these hilltoppers wow. and elijah stewart for the personal that is going to put them over the limit and so it'll be tavion hollingsworth but Look, at the free throw line. He, he, he goes by tape. Like, you know, I'm a stutterer. Line, 13, Shorter eight, 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 syllables, please. Shorter, two, eight, Shorter two, words. Eight, eight, eight. That's his name, just like Monte. And Monte is actually his name. No, his real name is Lamonte. <laughs> no, no, I thought you were talking about Monte Ellis again. I was. Western Kentucky has not missed a free throw in this game. Nine for nine. USC struggling. Six of 13. That was the case against UNC Asheville. The poor free throw shooting for the Trojans kept UNC Asheville in the game that ended in double overtime. And now Western Kentucky with its largest lead at seven points. The re most remarkable bit of information that I was able to garner about this in the history of WKU is that Courtney Lee tied Jim McDaniels for all-time career-leading score. Who they play, he played four years, Courtney did. Jim only played three. But to actually tie for a career statistic, that is truly remarkable. Foul on the floor, no basket. Hollingsworth with his third. Still puts him over the limit, so it'll be three throws here for Jonah Matthews. What about uh, SC next year? What do you think about this Trojan team losing? A couple of seniors, the last chance we're going to have to, to watch SC this year. We won't be that's, here Wednesday, so that, what do you think? That's all about the, 
the nature of college basketball, which is recruiting. You got to get new players. Players love it. They want to come and they want to play. And the opportunity to play at this school with this alumni network, George Lucas. They just had the groundbreaking ceremony a couple days ago over here in Exposition Park for his new billion-dollar-plus narrative art museum. You become a part of the USC family. You are set for life. Offensive rebound put back by Matthews. So Matthews now with eight points. It's a four-point game. And to see Dorian Clark. You all got to remember Dorian Clark, who was just on the USC team a few years ago. He was at practice today speaking to the guys. He's trying out for the NFL. USC Pro Day for football is here on campus on Wednesday. What's today? Today's Monday. Steal by McLaughlin. In the third quarter. Get it in the air. McLaughlin has the dunk attempt blocked wow, by Anderson. He's got a score here if you're the Hilltoppers. Oh, Stewart. That's a flagrant foul. foul. That's a flagrant foul. Well, hard to tell from this angle if he went for the block or not. I mean, it was a violent attempt at the block. Meanwhile, in the infield, you got to be careful. He's in the face of Peachy Nelson. Let's see here. Got him on the arm. I don't, I don't think it's flagrant. I agree with you. What? I, I, I withdraw my earlier statement. And a disgrace to the profession of basketball fans. Enfield's still hot, but uh, P.J. Nelson letting it go. But these guys have come to fight here, these Hilltoppers. They're playing with pride. They're playing like this game is going to last forever, and they're going to be the last team standing. They have not missed a free throw. 12 for 12. Here's a lot to shoot again. That play is worth a couple times tomorrow. That's why you don't play zone defense. Who's got the back side? Please, who's got pressure on the ball? You know Syracuse is in the Sweet 16, right? Playing zone defense. Beating Michigan State, which a lot of people thought would win the national title. Just reminding you about uh, one of our alma maters that is still playing. Here's a drive by Anderson. Can't get it. I silenced you, I noticed. 15 seconds to go. I'm stuck. You went to college. SC will hold for the final shot. Did you graduate? Here comes the ball screen. Penetration and dish. And look at this raucous crowd exploding. We're on our way. Maybe four overtimes. Matthew Chen up off the bench, fired up as could be. Elijah Stewart, leading three-point shooter in the history of Trojan basketball. Jonah Matthews by Western Kentucky still has the lead. Tenuous as it may be. Finishing strong at the hoop. Up and under. Dr. J, Jim McDaniels, Kentucky basketball. Daryl Griffith, Denny Crum. Yes, this is NIT, and we've got a game. NIT from Los Angeles on ESPN, but this is the Cumberland Gap, a narrow pass through the Cumberland Mountains where the states of Kentucky, Virginia, and Tennessee all come together. It was used by the Native Americans because all the buffalo and the, the animals and the deer come right through there so they would feast right there but then daniel boone found it and he was able to show the settlers coming in from all the different eastern states the way forward has been illuminated tonight by justin johnson who not only proposed to and is going to marry keely he has delivered big time tonight finishing at the basket area playing the high post being the swing man and we are set for a remarkable finish in this one-point NIT masterpiece, which is destined for overtime. Multiple uh, overtime. Uh, 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 Justin Johnson has 16 first points, five team, rebounds. Uh, the leading score for USC is Elijah Stewart with 17 points. And now Nick Rakosovic at the line shooting two. You know, we talked about Daniel Boone a lot tonight. So, we? so Daniel Boone's descendants, they made it to Oregon on the Oregon Trail. You've been to Oregon, right? And so. Oregon, which now has a fantastic women's basketball program, Kelly Graves and the great players they have up there, but the Daniel Boone descendants, they have a ferry named after them over the Willamette River, Boone's Ferry. You pass it every time on your way from Portland down to Eugene. That's from Daniel Boone. You know, the coonskin hat and everything, please. USC 7 of 17 at the foul line. I actually uh, watched Kelly Graves' team in person last night. Really? Very good team.
Oh, yeah, but this week, haven't Spokane. they won a ton of games of late? They're going to the Sweet 16. Second time in program history. The first oh. time was last year when Oregon went as a 10 seed. This year, a 2 seed. They're going to the Final Four? Or no, they're in the Sweet 16. That's the that's Can they your horses. Catch every moment of the 2018 NCAA Women's okay. Championship on the ESPN Family Network. For more, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA Championships. I love women's basketball. I love women's basketball. I want more. Please. Great pass, Jordan McGraw. Yeah. Oh Welcome to join us in Spokane for the regional uh, semifinals and regional final. When's that? This weekend. I've got a busy week. USC by one. Western Kentucky extended its lead to seven at one point in the third quarter despite just five baskets, its lowest uh, field goal total per quarter of the night. And now they trail by one minute gone by here in the and fourth. They're staying with this zone defense, the Trojans are. Omer. Oh, oh my. Oh Miss. He hit a couple in the first half. Five wins for Western Kentucky on the year. USC with 24, Matthews three, no good. Usher comes flying in, and foul is called. No, they're just calling that. They're not calling that. Right, they're right. just calling that. Right. Okay, when George McLaughlin goes along the baseline, you got to be thinking past. And so with Justin Johnson's arms down below, now theoretically that's right to have it at the at the dribbling level, but. You gotta think he's gonna be trying to pass it right by you. Whoa. Uh, he Much was caught better, Justin Johnson, that time. But the offer was caught between a pass and a shot. Ball out of bounds off of Western Kentucky. Let's just take a moment to think back about how great this week was. Oh my gosh. While you were whining and complaining about being here. <laughs> talking about it. Okay. McLaughlin with six to shoot, leans in and scores to give the Trojans a three-point lead. I was with the Tony Hawk Foundation building skate parks around the world with Stephen Funk and his child, Ben Jim and Jim. I was with Make-A-Wish and Stan Morrison out in Riverside. I spent two days with the challenged athletes for the CAF and the Saquon Band and the Kumeyaay Indians. I'm the luckiest guy in the world to be here tonight at NIT. Please, God, don't let me die. There's so much more to do. Stephen Hawking. Nine straight points, and then Thompson ends that USC run. The way they pass the ball against that zone, they have to do that on a consistent basis here. They do it every now and again. One point lead for the Trojans. Winner moves on to the quarterfinals to play Oklahoma State, and then the winner goes to New York. Stewart, 4 3, and a 20 point night for Elijah Stewart. There's just no answer for Jordan McLaughlin here. And this raucous crowd is just having the time of their life. Thank you, Arthur Gardner, for the band. Striking up the fight song. Literally every opportunity. And Rick Stansbury has seen enough. Our defense is collapsing and our offense has gone dry. Time for the Bourbon Trail. Find the Cumberland Gap. The Red River Gorge. I think that guy's been on the Bourbon Trail tonight. Beautiful passing every single time. Elijah Stewart, he's just too good. Welcome back to USC. A miss by Thompson, and the Trojans have possession. Three minutes into the fourth quarter, they have a four point lead. Nick Rakosevic is playing like Kevin McHale here. He's dominant on offense, he's just devastating on the boards. He's blocking shots, he's clogging up the middle. This is a superb talent. Just 20 years old and just getting started. Three off the heel by Usher, and then last touch by Rakosevic, who in the first round had 24 points, 19 timeout. rebounds, both oh, career cool. highs. And we have another timeout with the Trojans in front another by four. Timeout? Boy, how are we ever going to make it to the start of the Bob Dylan tour in Lisbon, Portugal? Things have changed. So St. Mary's knocked off Washington, so they will host Utah Wednesday on ESPN 2 in one quarter final. Winner will, winner will go to New York, and then Oklahoma State will play either USC or Western Kentucky. Obviously, if the Trojans win that game, we'll be here Wednesday night. Okay, so I've been filling out my bracket. You say knocked off. St. Mary's was the favorite there. They're the higher seed. They're the one seed. That's not knocking off. Well, taking care of business. When you're, when you're a mid-major conference against a uh, 
St. Mary's Randy oh, Nettie, that's a great program there. Our congratulations and our good fortune that Mike Hopkins has now come from Syracuse to the University of Washington. I hope we get eight games in Washington, Seattle next week. Next year. Let's go to some uh, of tonight's tweets. You can tweet at Bill Walton. He won't respond because he doesn't run his own Twitter account. You can tweet at Dave Patch. Okay. I will respond because I actually run I my respond own. to everything except nonsense. All right, so Bill Walton calling a WKU game is everything I did know I needed. Uh, I'm not going to read the second one. The third one, they're going to let Bill Walton. I'm not going to read that one either. You do know how to read. I just don't want to encourage did you. Did you, did you read the article in the New York Times this week about Stephen Hawking? Please check that out. That's one of the greatest articles ever. And what he did with his life. Every time you start whining and complaining and making excuses, I'm going to put you in touch with Abe Lemons and Stephen Hawking. That'd be tough. Well, we can work it out. Four point lead Beautiful for ball USC. Fake. Come right back. And the shot clock down to four. And Justin Johnson is really good. Whoa. Here throws it into the second row. To Dr. Kerr. So you're familiar with the black holes and the quantum physics and the gravity. You know that Stephen Hawking was born 300 years to the day of Galileo's death. You're so familiar with the four point game, right? Okay. They just yeah. took them 10 seconds to get the ball up court. This is off Jordan McLaughlin, but it was uh, no, touched by. Uh, right, so it's the over and back. And now Matthews three, no good. Sky for the rebound. Put Holby. the anchor close of their foul. Yeah. And that is the second team foul. West Kentucky, so it's going to be a side out here. This is a second person. As we talk about this NIT for the rest of our lives, my bracket is now nearly complete. But. We're going to be talking about Stephen Hawking, not since Einstein that we've talked about a physicist, a scientist like Stephen Hawking. Against all odds. Don't be limited by your physical handicaps. McLaughlin drives and scores, and the Trojans lead by six midway through the fourth quarter here at the Galen Center. Trojans playing beautiful basketball, and now the Hilltoppers are up against it. They have the firepower. This is one of the top scoring teams, one of the best shooting teams in the country this year. Colby, great defense. Jordan Usher everywhere. Three seconds, please. That's still an NIT rule, right? Great defense by Rakosovic. Colby eventually cleans it up inside. That's a big basket and a three-point opportunity. Wow. Rakosovic with the foul is third. First team foul. The three seniors on this Hilltopper team, they provide such leadership and maturity and the, and the exquisite team spirit that they have. They're staying right next door to Galen here at the Radisson. It's just a 90-second walk. It's one of the great experiences of your life. How do you know it's 90 seconds? Because I walked in here three times a day. A beautiful big Galen. Thank you, Lou and Helen. So you're telling people what hotel you're staying at now. I stand as a student here. Dave Pash. <laughs> so now you know my name. <laughs> McLaughlin misses. Oh, no, man. Rebounded by Johnson. Oh, I found that name on the wall somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> a, a random occurrence. Beautiful play. Yes. Hilltop basketball. Justin Johnson. <laughs> So, Hilltop, right? One point game. So, Hilltop's one of our rivals in high school. John Shagel and Bruce Ennis, two legends who gave me the life that I have today. Thank you, Hilltop High School, down in South Bay, San Diego. McLaughlin drives, kicks to Stewart in the corner. Matthews puts it on the floor. Look at that rebound, Colby. Push the ball for Western Kentucky to take the lead back. You, you said they were done over. The game was over. We were out of here, but Western Kentucky with a chance to take the advantage back. That's the way it's gone this week, and that's why the Bob Dylan Tour opening up on Thursday night is going to be so special. Tough shot, heartbreaker. Look at Colby, the work in the glass. Colby, what a job in the offensive glass. And look at this crowd from Western Kentucky, whether it's Lamar Smith, whether it's Dr. Philip Collis, whether it's Bob Hubbard. Oh my gosh, they've come so far, they're so close. Big shot, Jordan Usher ends a 7 nothing USC run with another three-point basket is done. Jordan Usher just pushes them all back in their seats. 
George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, Bill McMorrow, just so proud, Lynn Swan. Beard uh, hits the tough one. This is one of the greatest games I've ever been a part of. You said that about the last time we were here. And both of those statements are true. I will never forget this experience. Lynn Swan, the USC athletic director, taking the ball game in. Thank you, Lynn. Oh, what a job he's done here. Champions in football, second place in basketball. Three-point try again by Usher. Can't get this one. Long outlet pass. Nice. Here it gets oh, it back to Johnson. Oh, Johnson. oh my gosh. NIT. Dreams come true. Make a wish. Tony Hawk Foundation. Steve Funk. Built skate parks. Built basketball courts around the world. Let's go. Western Kentucky by two. Laughlin off the screen, pulls it back. Good defense by Western Kentucky. How many overtimes are you predicting today? Four. Okay, good. McLaughlin drives, and he gets the big shot. We're tied at 72, two and a half to play. Jordan has so much of Paul Westfall, so much of Pete Harvey. Doesn't have the facial expression that Pete had. Doesn't have the size and strength that Paul had. What a touch. What a mind. Stephen Hawking. Galileo. Copernicus. Thompson penetrates, wild foul. shot, but a foul on Rakosevic, and that is four on him. That's a bailout. There was no way this shot is going in. Please, play on Mick Fleetwood. Let's go to Fleetwood Max. Go your own way. Back cut, beautiful. And this touch right here to just turn that pass. And this, the ball never touched the floor from half court. This guy... <laughs> This is just perfect basketball. I love NIT. Welcome back to Los Angeles. Dave Pash, Bill Walton, Oklahoma State awaits the winner of this game on Wednesday night. If USC wins, it'll be here. If uh, Western Kentucky wins, they'll be in Stillwater. And we're tied at 72 with 2.09 to go. Jordan McLaughlin, 13 points, 13 assists, and just one turnover. Justin Johnson with 20 points. Pace Western Kentucky, and at the free throw line is Darius Thompson. And as we're on our way to multiple overtimes tonight, I can just think back to a week ago when Asheville snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. And when I think of jaws, and when I think of Rick Stansbury being from Wolf Creek and Neil Young's Wolf Moon, I think of the jaws of the wolves. Crushing power. 1,500 pounds per square inch of pressure. In other news, West Virginia has, or uh, Western Kentucky has not missed a free throw. Western Kentucky, 15 of 15 at the line. Two point lead, two minutes to go. Usher. Usher. Now that's basketball right there. He got fouled by look, Johnson. Look at the theory. Go in one direction, make a good fake, and then come back in the other direction, get in the air. When Rikosevic, when Big Vic, Jordan Usher go ahead and do that every single time, and it just becomes an automatic, memorized exhibition of brilliance, then this USC team, they'll be going all the way, not just to New York City. Well, the problem is they can't make free throws right now. They're 7 of 18 as a team, while Western Kentucky has not missed tonight. Usher 76% for the year. Just the second one. You're really on a downer, aren't you? What do you mean? I'm just pointing out that they've missed free throws. That's how Western Kentucky's even in this game. Trojans would have been up double figures if they were making a free throw. You don't even know how to ruin a good time. I'm having a great night here. Just love NIT and Western Kentucky USC basketball. Jordan McLaughlin again. He's everywhere. I'm going to miss this guy. There's McLaughlin on the other end. Angle cut off. Usher, oh, four, three, oh, way off. Just missed. Not what oh, USC that wanted that there in terms of the shot, too, coming top. pretty early in the shot clock. But the fact that Rick Stansberry, he recruited all those guys at Texas A&M when he was there with Billy Kennedy. Right, he was an assistant coach right. and the associate head coach there the last couple of years. Yep. Fantastic. In his second year now with the head man at Western Kentucky. Six yeah. NCAA tournaments when he was the head coach at Mississippi State. When he was at Mississippi State, he won at Arizona in the Christmas tournament. The only team in 53 years to ever win that tournament. Here's Johnson in the paint, and Western Kentucky up three with a minute to go. 
Hot of time here. Hilltoppers will call a timeout that will leave them with one. And we'll see if USC elects to look for threes here. With Andy Anfield able to draw a play coming out of the timeout or if they just try to get a quick two. But just think of the, the, the mantra for the Hilltoppers. The view from the top of the mountain is well worth the effort to get there. And these guys have put the work in tonight. When they were in practice here yesterday, not today's shoot around practice where they actually shot, one of their guys got up and tore the basket down. And that was the tenacity and the ferocity for the Hilltoppers. And they brought this mindset of we're here to work and we're going to work all night till the job is done. Congratulations, WKU. Well, don't congratulate them yet. They're only up three with a minute to go. Justin Johnson with 22 points. How about he became the first Western Kentucky player to lead them in scoring and rebounding three straight years since Jim McDaniels, we talked about earlier, who led Western Kentucky to the Final Four. You look at the numbers here tonight. So Western Kentucky has only taken nine threes. They've made all their free throws. I see struggling at the line. So Justin Johnson, just for fun, went out for spring football last spring. And he got hurt, hurt his knee. Coach Stansbury was livid. Western Kentucky always has a good football program. Forrest Lamp is here tonight. Yeah, Valley ball. Charger. Basket inside by Rokosovic. That was a great design play by Andy Enfield. Out of the timeout. It's a one-point game. Inside a minute to block. If you're Western Kentucky, learn from Nashville's mistake. Continue the offensive attack. One more basket. The game should be yours. Who can get it? Who can create? Who can finish? Justin Johnson. Can't oh, score, wow. but he'll go to the line and shoot two. Only a 55% free throw shooter on the year, though. What's the team's percentage tonight? WKU at the line. 100. Did you listen? They have a miss. Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to know if you knew how to calculate the percentage. Please, I went to serve. <laughs> Usher commits the foul is fourth. And, uh, That's one of the reasons I asked. <laughs> Justin Johnson has had a great night. Five of five tonight. Okay. 55% of the year. He'll shoot two. Hey. This is the first. Wow. And the clock is running. The officials <laughs> just caught it. They're going to have to go to the monitor and put time back on the clock. This is NIT. What's, what are the rules? <laughs> you, you go to the monitor and you put time back on the clock. No, just like any of the other game. The clock is it not running time. Please. They're going to put uh, three seconds back on 33.1. Okay, Justin Johnson. Keeley is at home watching. I think the, uh, the clock operator thought that it was a one and one, one, and one although there isn't but there's a no one, 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 one in right. IT. Right, not in the four quarter setup. So it's what a two point lead for Western Kentucky. A two second difference to the game. Shot clock, USC possession. Usher going to try another three point shot. Not very close. close. Push the ball, look up court, throw it up court. Back to back Push. air balls by Usher. And USC has to foul. They're not fouling. Well, they're trying to get a steal. Well, throw the ball, please. Fired up and down. And they get a basket. That was the worst case scenario for USC. They fail the foul, then they give up a dunk. They're down four. And their season about to be over. Wow. McLaughlin trying to draw the get foul. A down. USC season comes to an end. Western Kentucky is going to the quarterfinals and will play Oklahoma State on Wednesday night. And for the rest of my life, I will always be able to say that I was here on March 19th, the anniversary 56 years of Bob Dylan's first album, and the Hilltoppers come in and they take down the mighty Trojans. Wow, I was here. See you in November, William. Western Kentucky 79, USC 75. Here are the quarterfinal matchups for Bill Walton. I'm Dave Pash. Good night from Los Angeles.